as a PhD, you have expert knowledge that is valuable to organizations that cut across the spectrum. And so if you're a PhD that is finding that landing a career in academia is difficult or perhaps you want to escape academia, then this video is for you because in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you seven career options you can look at as a PhD, whether you have a STEM PhD or not. The first one, okay, is working for a global organization like the UN. And the UN actually has various agencies, or the United Nations has various agencies like UNICEF, which deals with um, matters that concern children and women around the world. You have the World Health Organization, you have the World Food Program. There are programs and agencies like this all around the world that you can work in as a PhD, and actually, your skills as a PhD usually presents such a great opportunity for you to start working with these organizations. Another benefit of working with these organizations is that you will be traveling around the world. Um, usually you'll be um, positioned somewhere or stationed somewhere for a few years and then you may have to move to another place. I, I know somebody that works within the World Health Organization. They're also very well compensated. So these global organizations are some organizations you can begin to think about um, as you start your job search. Another area you can look into as a PhD are security organizations. Yes, organizations like the FBI, the CIA and other three letter worded agencies <laughs> do need PhDs for several purposes, right? So whether you work in science or business or tech, they need these skills because they need your expertise in helping them make informed decisions about investigations, about intelligence, all of that good stuff, right? So if you're a PhD, you do have the requisite skills and knowledge to be that expert person at these organizations. And so that's another place to look for professions. Now, definitely not going to be a 007 situation, but still, I think it, they're pretty sweet gigs. Consulting is another area you can consider as a PhD. Now, consulting is a very, very broad term, but usually it refers to activities that revolve around doing research, doing data analysis, and helping companies, nonprofits, governments make decisions, right? And so if you are a scientific consultant, maybe in the, in the biomedical space, maybe you're helping a startup decide if the product that they're going to make Make, has enough market share or has enough market for them to even make this. Um, if you work in the agricultural world, your PhD is in agriculture, you may be consulting with organizations that have an agricultural focus. And so consulting really pulls on your expertise as a biomedical scientist, as an agriculturist, as a you know business PhD, whatever your PhD is in. And most of the time with consulting, you can go in either as an independent consultant. So they're people that have full-time jobs and then they will do consulting on the side because of their knowledge. And then of course there are full-time positions as a consultant. Now, from doing a little bit of research before this video, what I found was that a lot of consulting is usually given to companies and um, people that go ahead and set up a consulting business on their own. Sometimes it's really hard to break into unless you have extensive expertise. But since I'm talking to most of you that are maybe finishing up your PhD or you just finished your PhD, you may not have that experience. So the best thing to do is to first of all, get a role in a consulting company um, and then of course, prove your mettle there. And then if you want to set up a business later, you can do that. Another field to consider as a PhD is higher education administration. And this will cut across all PhDs. So far, I think most of what I've shared, shared with you will cut across all PhD types, and especially this one, right? As a P, as a higher education administrator, you're working in an, an administrative role, right? Um, this involves data, collecting data when it comes to the university. You may be involved in analyzing that data, um, advising students. If you have done some TAing or teaching whilst you're doing your PhD, you already have experience 
working with student populations and so all of that can be valuable experience that you can bring into your role and most of the time the people that become the presidents of universities are phd holders where do you think they got those people from from our ranks right people that have stayed in higher education administration for a really long time um can rise to those levels so that's another place you can consider a career in as a PhD, you may also consider a career in government policy. So all around the world, governments all around the world have to draft policies that govern education, that govern healthcare, that govern business, that govern everything, right? But the thing is that they usually have to depend on experts, right, in these fields to make those policies and to make sure that those policies make sense, okay? So they're going to need government policy advisors. So this is where you as a PhD with such specialized knowledge can really shine in advising the politicians and all the people that draft these policies and laws that, hey, this is where we need to go and this is what we need to do. And this also comes in handy, this, this kind of policy advising also comes in handy, not just for governments, right, but also for international organizations, right? I mentioned the UN earlier on, that's an organization that also crafts policies. And, you know, if you have that experience, if you have some experience um, in that arena, and not just in policy per se, but really in a field, and you can give advice to policymakers on how how to make those decisions, you are in a great place to get a career in this field. User experience is the next one I'm going to talk about. And user experience, I think, has become such a lucrative profession, especially with the explosion of the tech industry. And what do user experience researchers do? Well, they tend to study the target audience for specific products. And so most of the time, tech companies like Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or any of these other tech companies, Apple, will have you. UX researchers really study that demographic they're trying to target with a particular product, um, study the psychology. And so most of the time I, I see that a lot more psychology majors or major people that majors majored in anthropology or some kind of social science, right, tend to go into these professions. And you know, I've heard some really good things from um some, from like reading posts from UX researchers on LinkedIn. So it seems like they're really enjoying but their profession, but um, user experience research is another thing you can look into as a PhD. Becoming an industry researcher or analyst, and I feel like this is such a broad field, okay? It's a, it's a really broad field when we talk about industry researcher or analyst, because you can, you can essentially be an industry researcher or an analyst in all of these areas I talked about. You can do it in the education sphere, you can do it in science, you can do it in business, you can do it in the humanities where your skill, your your skill of being a researcher, your knowledge of cultures of people, your knowledge of a social construct allows you to be the best person to analyze some data or research some subject and then provide advice. And of course, it's kind of like, this is, I feel like it's somehow tied to consulting, right? Provide advice, right? to the right stakeholders so that they can make the right decisions. This may also come handy in nonprofit organizations, which was not one I had actually put on my list that I'm looking at and telling you this, but in nonprofit organizations, even though they are not non-profit or not for profit organizations they still have to make money they still have to generate income right and so you being there and and being that industry researcher analyst consultant is really helpful across all these industries that i have chatted about today